Grace Home Kitchen, thank you very much for the super chat. Hi, I'm a 41 year old female living with PAH and arthritis, six weeks on carnivore, lost six kgs, which is absolutely fantastic. Very well done. Um, and, and pain almost gone. I just want to know, can carnivore diet reverse my PAH? Um, so, well, first of all, I just want to say, you know, it's, it's only been six weeks. You've already, um, you've already lost six kilos. Your pain has, has significantly improved from your arthritis. That's an amazing, um, that's an amazing improvement already. It's only been six weeks. Um, the issue with PAH and again, there, you know, I, I, I say this before, other times, but there are a lot of acronyms out there. So I am going to assume that you mean one of the more common ones, which is, um, you know, pulmonary hypertension, pulmonary arterial, arterial hypertension. And, um, that's, uh, at least the only one I can think of right now, uh, with that acronym. So, um, I, I don't know is the short answer. It's not something that I've, seen too much of it's not it's not a, a disease that i treat it's not an issue that i treat um i haven't come across too many people that have reported back so you know if i had it would be very anecdotal i haven't seen studies on ketogenic diets and um uh pah they could be there there are literally thousands of these things so i've i've seen dozens and dozens i haven't seen thousands uh, i haven't looked at all the thousands that are out there but you you can you can check this out and if people have a condition that you're that you're living with and you want to say okay you know can a carnivore diet help me well there may not be one on a carnivore diet but a carnivore diet is a high fat animal based ketogenic diet and the ketogenic diets in the literature are high fat meat based ketogenic diets they're just cutting out carbohydrates and what you replace that with fat protein but they replace that with fat and protein from meat. They don't replace that with fat and protein from plants because it's a, it's a very poor source of fat and protein and it's nutritionally deficient in many ways and significantly inferior in even more ways. So they don't. So these thousands of studies that do ketogenic diets are all animal-based diets. They're all meat-based diets. And that's probably why the powers that be are trying to trash it because they, they want us to think that meat is harmful even though it doesn't harm any other animal on earth carnivores or herbivores herbivores routinely will eat uh smaller animals opportunistically i've seen elk and deer eat uh ducklings and little chickens and even rabbits like full-grown rabbits that was a weird one but um because they don't have the right teeth so they're just chewing this in a very strange way and um but they do you know, this doesn't hurt them, right? It doesn't hurt us either. Why would we be the only creature on earth that gets hurt from eating our natural evolved diet? And, and meat doesn't have any toxins in it. It's not toxic to any form of life. They can have a poison sack. That's different. The meat itself is not poisonous to anything. Anything I know of anyway, I, I couldn't imagine anything doing it because herbivores eat this stuff too, opportunistically. So either way, um, you can look up ketogenic, like go on you know, PubMed or Google Scholar or something like that, something you have access to, and just look up PAH or pulmonary arteri arterial or arterial hypertension and uh, ketogenic diet and see if anything has come up, see if someone has studied it. They have. I mean, literally there's thousands of these things. You can also look at fasting mimicking diets and whatever disease or disorder that you come up with because that's a way of hiding the word ketogenic because that's a bit of a four letter word in some academic circles. And so, you know, they say it's like, well, we know fasting is, is really good and helpful in these conditions, but you know, that's really hard to fast for this period of time. And so, well, what about a diet that mimics fasting, right? And gets you in the same metabolic state as when you're fasting, uh, AKA a ketogenic diet. So a carnivore diet is a ketogenic diet. So anything that applies to those, like those benefits you get from ketogenic diets, from animal-based, meat-based ketogenic diets are going to apply to a carnivore diet. Um, and then some, because you're cutting out more than just the carbs. You're cutting out more than just carbs and, and going into that metabolic state. You're also cutting out all the plant toxins that are coming with that. And um, and there's plenty of books on this. Look up, you know, Dr. Gundry's, you know, The Plant Paradox. Look up 
uh, Most Delicious Poisons. It's written by a professor of biology at UC Berkeley, an evolutionary biologist and professor of biology there. Um, and uh, any textbook on botany, I mean, they all cover this stuff. Plants are toxic. That's how they survive. They're not, they're not duking it out with people, not running away, fighting back, um, scratching people and clawing them and attacking and all these other sorts of things. They're just sitting there. They're sitting ducks. They're just, they're not even trying to run away. They're not even trying to hide idiots, you know? So how the hell do they defend themselves? Why are they not, why are they still there? You know, why do they exist as a form of life? Because they have actually have really robust defenses and they are chemical in nature. The vast majority are chemical in nature. They are toxic by design. And so you get rid of these things, you're going to get rid of these toxins. Um, so that's what I would do. I would look up for that. Unfortunately, I don't know if there is literature on PAH and uh, ketogenic diets that could be extrapolated to people on a carnivore diet. But I do know that you're going to be helped in a number of other ways, just like you know the previous question that there are so many good reasons for going on a carnivore diet, and hopefully it helps your issue. But even if it doesn't, it's going to improve your life in a thousand different ways. And it's going to be more than worth it. It can certainly make your life a lot easier and a lot better and uh, better able to deal with your, uh, your PAH as a result of that and just be healthier overall and just be as healthy as you possibly can be in the body that you have. And hopefully it gets better. But again, there are things in this world that can harm us that, that are outside of our diet. And uh, a lot of things are from our diet. A lot, I would say like 90% of the diseases that we're treating now, the issues that we're treating now as doctors are cut, come from the eating an inappropriate diet, a biologically inappropriate diet, easily 90%. But that leaves 10% that's not from that. But you can be as healthy as you possibly can be, and you're going to be better able to weather and heal from those other 10% of things. So that's what I would suggest is just doing it anyway and seeing how you go, and you can check and see on uh, Google Scholar or PubMed and see if there's anything on ketogenic diets or fasting mimicking diets. And anybody else who has an issue that they're concerned about, do that same search. More often than not, you'll find something, you'll find something very promising. Hey everyone, really happy to announce a new sponsor for the show and for everybody down in Australia, Stockman Steaks, who are delivering high quality grass fed and finished pasture raised beef and other meats, flash frozen and vacuum sealed to your door. Something that I've been enjoying a lot of myself recently as well. They also have a great range of specialty items such as high fat keto mints and carnivore beef and organs mints with liver, kidneys and beef heart as well. So use code CHAFEE to Day for a free order of beef mints or another specialty gift along with your order at stockmansteaks.com.au and I'll see you over there. Thanks guys. And uh, and it can, can uh, most likely help you. And there's just more and more data coming out every single day. And so it's a very exciting time because we're actually, we're actually healing people. It's almost as if it's almost as if, uh, you know, the, 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 the system was working in a way that people are actually trying to help each other and figure out the root causes of disease. Um, these diseases just never existed before, and now they're just the only things we treat. So what happened? Something in our environment. So you identify what happened in our environment. It wasn't meat. We've always been eating meat. So that wasn't it. So it's something new, right? Like processed food, seed oils, refined sugars, refined carbs. This crazy plant-based push that everyone has been trying to shove down our throats for the last 60 years. Actually, really 150 years, if you want to go back far enough. So... That's what's new. Meat's not new. So just eat to your biological design and you'll be as healthy as you're biologically designed to be. And that's pretty damn healthy. All life on earth is extraordinarily healthy. The natural state of all life from single celled animals, you know, to humans and everything in between trees, plants, fungus, everything. They're all healthy. They're, the natural state is to be healthy. So why are we sick? Why 90% of Americans why are 90% of Americans uh, unwell? Why do they have at least one metabolic disease? Why are 70% of people in Western countries overweight or obese? Why is that? You know, that's not normal. That's not natural. That's not supposed to happen. Um, so something's happening in our environment. We're doing this to ourselves and it's not meat. We've always been eating meat. That's established. We already know that's safe, right? They have to prove that eating this other crap is better than eating meat. Or, or at least, or even safe at all. They have not done that. They've started at that as a position of, yeah, fruits and vegetables are really good, and then meat is bad, 
saturated fat, cholesterol, ooh, that causes disease. Therefore, anything without saturated fat and cholesterol is de facto good for you. That was a whole argument. And so we're starting from the point of, well, hold on. Everyone knows plants. You have to prove that meat's good. You have to prove that we don't eat that. Bullshit. Meat was established. That was just usurped. And they just sort of did a little coup and got meat kicked out of there. But that was the established reigning champ. No one ever proved that plants were good for you. They just said that saturated fat and cholesterol were bad for you. So things without saturated fat and cholesterol de facto became good for you because the only thing that was bad was saturated fat and cholesterol. And therefore, anything without saturated fat and cholesterol automatically became good for you. Uh, that's not how that game works. But they snuck it through. Good job, them. You know, got to you know give credit where credit's due. They were the sneaky little bastards and they they shoveled something through that should never have gotten through. And they, you know... More power to them. But now we've recognized what happened. We, we see the game and we just plug up that hole and say, no, that's bullshit. Meat is established. We've already always eaten meat. That is what's healthy. That's the baseline. You have to prove that something else is better, not the other way around. So just go back to baseline. Eat what we've been eating for millions of years. Eat what's biologically appropriate for our diet or, our, or for our species. And you will be as healthy as you can be. And hopefully that helps your PAH. And if not, it'll still make you a lot healthier and you'll feel a lot better having to deal with the PAH. And so at least that's something anyway. All right. Thank you, everyone. I hope that was helpful. I hope that was useful for people. And um, I will see you on the next live event. And I will see those in uh, London in uh, the weekend of the 18th in May. And then people in Austin for the Hack Your Health Conference at the end of May. And then in Switzerland, St. Moritz in uh, early June. That one's going to be awesome. Really looking forward to that. And then, um, and then in August, I'll be in San Diego for the uh, Summit for Metabolic Health. I'll be speaking there again this year. Last year, I gave a, a talk on cancer and ketogenic metabolic therapy as a novel adjunct for um, treating cancer. And then, um, and then I'll be in Wyoming for the. The, the beef roundup in um, Riverton, Wyoming, which is now being dubbed the most carnivore friendly city on earth. And that'll be great because that's just a gorgeous part of the country and gorgeous part of the world. And so if people are there and want to go and wrestle a bear, I don't recommend that, but they have them there and um, best to be looked at through the window anyway, but gorgeous country. And it'll be a lot of, a lot of fun with a lot of great people. Anyway, that's my rundown and hopefully see you guys at the next live event and uh, hopefully see a lot of you at the at the uh, conferences um, because that's always fun to uh, to see everybody and, and get to hang out and talk in person. All right, everyone. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time. You need to challenge yourself. You need to work to muscle fatigue. You don't just work until it's like, oh, it sort of feels tough and now oh, I'm kind of tired. You go until you absolutely can't go anymore. That's that's how you get real results. It, when you stop, if you do 10 reps, but you could do 12, you will get...